Hello viewers, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to debunk the second street accident as brought out in the story The Sins of the Fathers from the anthology A Silent Song and other stories. The second street accident. Where do we first come across these words? In this story, there is a friend of uh, the central character. Central character Rondo has his friend Gaston. It is from Gaston that we first hear this word, second class, second street accident. Gaston asks Rondo if he knows anything about second street accident and this question punctuates the previous question that does Rondo know what his father Mr. Wafa does because actually at this point he is an ex-security minister. Rondo does not bother to know anything about this. The story begins when Rondo Ruafa and his wife Selina Armoni, their two daughters, Yuna six, Rhoda five, and Rondo's father in law and Selina's father, Mr. Basil Mzamani, have died in a road accident. It is quite interesting that there is kind of a conversation that takes place between Mr. Rwafa, Rondo's father, and Rondo. The conversation carries an inkling that Mr. Rwafa could be knowing something about the accident. Let us consider some of the statements or maybe words of consolation that Mr. Wafa has for his son, Rondo. He says that your grief will pass away like dew in the morning sun. One day you will be grateful Glad that this happened now and not later. You will remember me and thank me. I really doubt if it is logical that someone could at one point be glad that the loss of his daughters, the loss of his children has taken place at any point. Not now, not later. Another statement that Mr. Wafa makes is that nothing lives forever. You are still young. You can have other children. These two statements against the backdrop of the grief that the bereaved family of Rondo is feeling I believe does not do much to console them. But it could be a confession of guilt on the part of Mr. Rofa. Going forward to <coughs> this text is that as Mr. Waffer's words of consolation gives him away, he also makes this statement that you will hear people talking. <laughs> Rondo, don't believe them. All theirs are lies. And uh, truly, people are talking. And the mourners who were streaming in and out of Rondo's home in Borough Dale were really wondering 
and they were saying that whatever accident took place was not natural. It was out of the ordinary. So it is like a preemptive word on the part of Mr. Rwafa, knowing very well that some people might really get to his son and tell him that, you know what, you need to wake up and see things as they are. Your father would have been involved in the death of your children. This story uses to a greater extent flashback. The story begins during the morning period at Borrowdale, but then we are taken back at the kind of relationship that has existed between father and son, Mr. Rwafa and Rondo. And uh, it has been quite a frosty relationship. It's not been easy. It is evident that there was a time that Mr. Rafa was opposed to Rondo's marriage to Selena. He called Rondo an effeminate, an effeminate spineless son of the Rafa who disgraces the family by marrying into an ignominious family. What compounded the ignominy was that the first child that came out of the relationship between Rondo and Selena was a girl having the blood of Ndevere. After the girl being born, then another girl was added onto the list. And uh, Rondo's mother, Mrs. Rwafa, really tells Rondo that his father's opposition to his marriage to Selena is as a result of a way long conflict that existed between the Zezuru Karanga, that is Rondo and Rafa's clan, and Viti Ndevere, and that is the clan that Selina and his and her father Basil Mzamani hails from. So all these issues compounded make Mr. Rwafa opposed to the marriage between Rondo and Selena. It is quite interesting that the first day that Selena has been introduced and Mr. Rwafa asks Rondo who her people are, after being told, he walks out of the house and he never makes an appearance for the rest of the day. It is also quite interesting that during the wedding ceremony of Rondo and Selena, it was Rondo's mother and Basil Muzamane, Rondo's father-in-law, who were able to foot the bills of that wedding ceremony. So what appears here is that Mr. Rofa does not like Selena and he does not also like Basil Mzamani, that is Rondo's father-in-law. It is quite interesting that at the end of the at the beginning of the story, and uh, that actually is the action that comes at the end of this plot. The plot is not that linear. We come to see that it is 
Rondo's father-in-law, Vessel Muzamani, and the two black sheep in this family, that is Yona and Rhoda, who are Rondo's daughters, who get killed in this accident. It is quite interesting for us to understand the second street accident it is, it, it is imperative that we need to also highlight a certain action that goes on in this text. There is this time that uh, Rondo and Selena have organized a joint birthday party for their daughters, Yuna and Rhoda. Uh, they have invited all their family members. Could be it was an attempt to create some truce between Basil Muzamani and Mr. Rafa. So Basil Muzamani, Rondo's father-in-law, arrives days before the D-Day and uh, Mr. Rafa ostensibly drives along to come and see him. Later on, it is apparent that the main reason as to why Mr. Rafa has come is that just as the government officials and those party officials who are high up there have interest in getting the pieces of land, the farms that they so desire, Mr. Rafa also has his eyes on a farm in Rua, the farm that belongs to one white settler called Kwe. So Mr. Rafa invites Basil Muzamani for a ride to drive along with him to Roa. And uh, the facade that he's riding on is that they are going for dark shooting. When they leave, what really interests or attracts the attention of Rondo and Basil Muzamani, who are present in the Pajero is that there is a truck that is filled with boys, youths, wielding clubs menacingly, having spears, bros, and arrows. And it is quite interesting that at whatever turn off that they turn, that this truck always falls in behind them. And uh, sarcastically, we see Basil Muzaman makes some joke and asks Mr. Rafa if the youth in the truck are also his duck shooting posse to which Mr. Rafa answers to the affirmative. As the ride continues, the Pajero pulls up around a jeep that has been parked alongside the road. This is just some kilometer or maybe some meters away from Rua their intended destination. And there is a white woman there who has opened the hood of her jeep and is trying to check if things are working all right with the vehicle. So when they pull up next to this woman, the youth who are in the truck also stop. The woman senses maybe she has a premonition that things are not right. 
and she goes into the, the vehicle, reaches for her rifle and points at this group. The youth seem to be baying for her blood. When Ron looks around, then he realizes that his father is not there. So it has to take the intervention of Basil Mzamane to stop these youths from doing anything inappropriate. First, he tries persuading them and uh, telling them that he comes from Bulawayo. And uh, should he take back the message to Bulawayo that this is the way people behave down here? There is one of the youth who try to ask who he is and that they're working on orders. At that point, Mzamani cunningly tells the youth that he is in the same rank as the person who might have ordered them to orchestrate this mission. He tells them that the mission has aborted and that their boss, ostensibly Mr. Rwafa, is going to communicate to them. And this is the way he gets to save the life of this white woman, which Rondo later on realizes that is the Mrs. Quay. He is guilty and he keeps on looking down because he was really accustomed, he was used to always visiting the quails. Sometimes they gave him milk, they gave him honey, and they gave him fruits. So it is kind of a betrayal that at the time that his intervention was needed, he did not rise to the occasion. At this point, when the men in the truck have gone back, that is when Mr. Rafa dashes out of the bush. He gets into the pajero and he looks so bitter. The aborted mission should have not been aborted. According to his body language, according to his words, according to the stony silence that now engulfs the Pajero. At one point, when uh, Rondo's guilt or desire to know more of a policy, and he asked the father if that was Mrs. Quayle, the father answers quite rudely and very arrogantly that, is she your mother? So this episode at Bulawayo, this, this, this episode at Rua, I mean, is really a chastisement and uh, an indictment. And uh, Mr. Rafa becomes guilty as charged when uh, the next day or when one day later after the, the birthday party Basil Muzamani gets involved in somewhat a similar accident that really its contours could not be understood. So then this could be the second street accident where Mr. Rafa organizes and orchestrates in a choreographed way an accident but does not get involved personally. So this is the second street accident. And it is quite interesting that Mr. Rafa really kills 
his own granddaughters. What a sin of a father. 